Welcome to the first module of the Lightweight M2M Academy. This module covers the basics of the Lightweight M2M standards and explains you why there's a need for such a standard in the first place. So Lightweight M2M is an IoT standard that supports developers with creating, maintaining and managing IoT applications. So why is there a need for such a standard? Well, the IoT market is still much like the wild, wild west. There are too many companies who are building their IoT applications from the ground up. They're making their own rules on how the devices need to behave, what security layers are implemented and how devices respond to server commands. And once deployed their IoT devices, it's, it's, it's often a black box and users don't really understand the true inner workings of those devices. And it means that users are dependent on these design houses to further develop this application. But it's also expensive and very risky. So what if the design house goes bankrupt or, or out of business for some reason, then your IoT applications cannot be further maintained or may even stop working altogether. And imagine the hassle when having to manage all of those different devices from different design houses and different vendors, all adhering to different data standards and, and payload formats and, and, and server operations. It's such a hassle to, to manage such a variety of devices. So as a response to this fragmented market, a few very clever people from the organization called the OMA Specworks sat together and they started collecting the best practices from the IoT market and developed a framework on how IoT applications should ideally be designed. And this led to the release of the lightweight M2M standards in 2017. And the goal was to standardize the IoT market and guide developers into building interoperable products, meaning that any device can communicate with any server and vice versa, as long as they adhere to this open standard. So let's cover a few basic elements of the lightweight M2M specifications, starting with the architecture, which is actually rather simple. It basically contains two separate components. The client, which runs on the end device, and the server, which runs in the cloud. And there are different implementations available as of today. A couple of open source ones like NJ, Zephyr, Akama, and also a, a proprietary one from IOTERB. Same for the lightweight M2M server. There are also multiple options you can choose from um, in the market, either commercial or open source. And there's also an optional third component, which is called the bootstrap server. And this bootstrap server is an intermediate server that can inform the client about what server it needs to connect to. And it can share the security credentials with the lightweight M2M client. And this allows the client to migrate to different lightweight M2M servers over time. So let's try deconstructing an IoT application. So usually devices contain several components, whether it's sensors like temperature accelerometer or peripherals like GPS modules, um, but they may also contain a wireless communication module like a Wi-Fi chip or a cellular modem. And all of these components require a piece of software that needs to control those, those, those hardware components. And in addition, there are also software components or configurations like the security settings or the server settings or, or the firmware upgrade um, um, capabilities. And all of these different sections are what we call components or what we can also call objects or smart objects in this lightweight M2M space. And there's actually a public database available on the Lightweight M2M website that contains over a thousand of these standardized objects, each containing information on how these objects should be implemented. But let's go one step further and try deconstructing those objects. Well, let's say we're implementing a GPS module that collects location data. Well, there's a standardized object for doing so called the location object. And this has the public identifier number six. So each object contains at least one object instance. And there are some um, 
implementations where devices have multiple object instances, for example, if multiple GPS modules are implemented, then you can make a distinction between the different objects through object instances. And each object instance contains multiple resources. For example, if you're sending localization or location data, then you, you have a specific resource to indicate that you're sending longitude data or latitude or, or another one for altitude. So why is this important? Well, there's a clear format on how to report data. So when sending a message, we first say what kind of data we're sending before sending the actual data. And this standardized way of structuring data makes it super easy for cloud services to read and process data. So again, going back to the example of the GPS sensor, well, we have the, the identifier, what we call the URI of let's say 600 and six is the object ID identifier for um, location, then zero because I know we only have one object instance, which is identified with the number zero. And then resource ID zero relates to latitude and resource ID one relates to longitude. So we start with 600 and then we follow with the latitude data informing the server what kind of data we're sending. So to recap, Lightweight m 2 m offers a very simple and bandwidth efficient communication method designed for resource constrained IoT devices. It has a well-defined data format, makes it very easy to interpret data and has security by default as we will learn in, in future modules. It also comes with support for more advanced software configurations, among others, firmware updates over the year. And because there's a standardized way on how these devices are managed through server commands, it's easy to update configurations over time. Thus far, the theory about module one. So make sure you do read the theory as well that comes along with this module. And I'm wishing you all the best with fulfilling the first exercise on how to create your first lightweight M2M application. Best of luck.